So the name of the game is to make a bus bar. I need to make two bus bars, actually four, but two for, for the batteries and then two after the batteries from the controller, um, solar charge controller. So with the, um, with the amount of information, things I've looked up in recent, I have been doing this somewhat or mostly incorrect as much as I could. Um, I thought I was doing fairly well and I started to have issues and I thought to myself, before I even looked at anything else, is something just does not seem right when you're pushing all the power in in one spot and then pulling it all out and one, or actually I was pulling out and all over the place, killing batteries and cells and ca causing probably more damage on the batteries than I really needed to. So, the, um, need to make a bus bar so I can push the power down and evenly distribute it to the batteries with the same length wire though as, rec as um, always talked about. Use same length wire, same length wire. So I'm gonna be doing that. So whatever the furthest one battery is from where the bus bar is gonna go will be the length of all of them, uh, regardless if they're closer to the bus bar or not. So that's gonna be my concept for that. The uh, bus bars are fairly expensive and it takes time to get them out to where I'm at. So I'm going to make my own with some copper tubing. I've seen some people though take the copper tubing and they smashed it together, right? My concern with smashing it together is if you have air gap in there and you're running electricity through it, you may have an arc or arcing due to the air gap in there. So I'm actually gonna leave the air gap and just bolt through it. So I'm gonna leave the air gap um, as it is. Let's just leave it as a solid piece instead of pieces that are touching and not touching throughout. It's just one solid piece that's touching all the way around. It'll help keep it cooler too for temperatures. And um, by no means whatsoever am I recommending to do this. I'm just showing you what I do. Cut locking washers. And bolts. Okay. So the whole the uh, thought is, I'm gonna use a washer in the bottom to keep the head from going through if I need to, from uh, pulling through too much. We'll see how that goes. And then a locking washer and nut on the top. The wire that comes off of this is going to go to the battery. So this is one, it'll be a tube of however long, I haven't decided yet. With 50 of these in, for the negative and 50 of these for the positive. So you're going to do 50 in one tube or bus bar and then 50 in the other tube or bus bar to um, create your bus bar system. How many batteries you have and if you need to expand or take any out, you'll want to have available spaces for that. Also, you're going to want to have the space where the wire comes from the solar charge controller to the bus bar, where you clamp that down and drive the and drive the uh, power into it. Because I don't know the actual heat temperature um, displacement of how hot this will get and how cool it'll stay, I'm going to keep track of that with the heat gun as I'm charging and as I'm running the system. If it gets too hot and it's not going to work, I have no problem scrapping this bus bar and then I'll go buy one online. If that's what I have to do, then that's what I'll do. But if this can work um, cost effectively, then I'm gonna do this. So we're gonna give this a try. I'm not running a large system with a heavy amount of amps and wattage through it. This is a temporary setup from now till spring when we then we'll add to our, our uh, capabilities. Let's put it that way, okay? Okay, I got some clamps to hold the pipe down. I got some pair of cutters, a drill bit, slightly oversized, but not uh, not real bad. It's actually really close, and a punch to tap where I'm going to put the hole at. That way, the I don't walk it all over the place, especially on a round tube. Try 
go as straight as we can. Might be right in the way of one of the lines, but until then, we're just gonna do this first. So, let's measure the pipe and then see how the spacing that we need to put these in. At 33! Okay, an even number. Every inch will give you 30, every half inch will give you 60. I'll give you over 60. So, just to make it easy on myself, I should just go every half inch. Spacing. Let's check the heads for, uh, make sure that nothing's going to touch. Half inch. Spacing good enough. So the heads won't touch, but you gotta remember that your that your uh, nuts here are gonna be a little bit bigger. So this is kind of like a dry fit when you get when you do this. What you're doing is you're just setting up, making sure that it's gonna work the way you're planning. Because typically things don't. Okay. So if I go a half inch here and a half inch here, that brings it pretty close. And they got to be pretty spot on. I don't know if I can be that accurate. Right? I mean, they won't be touching, but. Okay, so we know we can go to 60, so we can go another eighth out. So if we go, so every five eighths, we'll put our center at five eighths, about right there. From center to center. You don't want to put one on the very end. I'm not going to do that. I'll probably tear it off right at the one inch mark. And then we'll go up five eighths. Which is right there. Double check back. So center to center. And so I have a bunch of this 110 wire. And so what, essentially what we're going to do is take this 110 wire, just like an electrical outlet socket, right? You have the wire that goes around the outside of the socket or the electrical outlet. And it's looped over, over the uh, screw or not. Okay. And then you tighten down to it. So this is the wire that's going to come off of this tube. That's going to be looped to it with this. Then the other side of this will have one of these. Which are really tight, thankfully. Oh, no, that one's crimped. Okay. There, and then we'll crimp this down onto the um, onto the line, and that'll be our connection from there to the connections on the battery. Like so. Except for this is a male, but I got a female in. It'll collect on so. I wish I had a better stand. Oh. Yeah. So now we're going to take our punch and our hammer, make holes all the way down, try to keep them center. Oh, shit. I don't need that much. Holy crap.
Alright, so let me move some of this stuff out of the way so you guys can see better. I am halfway through the first bar, or almost halfway through the first, first one. So I've already done the first one, and what I'm going to show you is that I'm going to use this as a template to do the second one. So I drilled uh, the holes on both ends. And I'm just using a screw that I found and a aluminum nail. Um, that's just to hold it for the template. I'll be able to there we go. I'll be able to hold this down um, by hand actually and put the holes into the pipe. It'll be the same distance all the way down. Then I'm gonna take this pipe off and do the same thing and use that for the template on top of the other PVC pipe that I'm using to um, be the standoff, okay? Keep in mind at the end of all this, the amount of wattage and voltage that I'm using, the amount of amperage that's going through it will not be as much as other systems. So I'm just doing a temporary uh, get through the winter system and just enough to run some lights and multiple other things each thing being about 7 watts and 0 0.09 amps, so not a whole lot. Um, the actual most amps that will go through this will be into it itself from the solar charge controller. I have a heat gun. We're going to make sure that we watch the temperature on the pipe, around the connections, and on the plastic itself for any melting and uh, temperature to that. If that's an issue, I can change that out with something else. I'm not sure what it would be yet piece of wood would probably have more um, has a higher flash point before it starts to melt or anything um, if that's the case then I'll go to that but I'd rather use PVC honestly um, All right, you see all those gnarly burrs in there? We're gonna take this file here and knock them down. Then we're gonna take the metal shaver or metal um, trimmer. Okay, so this is for metal, plastic, whatever. And we're just gonna clean those holes up. Uh, a little harder because they're smaller holes, but it does clean them up a little bit. And then you're still gonna have some burrs on the inside, which we're gonna take after we do the plastic. We're gonna put some burrs of plastic in there. We're gonna take wire and we're gonna push the wire through the pipe and clean it out that way. So after you've done this with all, all the holes, you take this, you can do it on the edge of a pipe Right, you see this little bit of burr right here? Okay, and it would clean up the edge of the pipe. Just keep bringing it around until it gets that burr off. All right, the same thing for the inside here. You take this and just move it around, cleaning off any burr. Um, the rest of the burr that got kind of mashed in after sanding it and that'll clean it out. All right, so while I'm remembering, not that there's, I would forget from any distractions around me, um, I need to put a mark, and I'm putting this one, I'm making a check mark, and a check mark. That's gonna identify this side of this tube, this side up with this side of the pipe, 
in case I when I'm moving my pipe and stuff around as I'm putting things together the temp I don't want to use the wrong templates because they won't line up exactly the same so that's what we got Okay, so now we have our, our holes drilled all the way through. Alright, I gotta drop some trash. Alright, I'll be right back. Huh? I gotta drop it. It's gonna drop it on me. All right, now that we've got the area pretty much cleaned up and the tubes um, template kind of set in place from one end to the other, we're going to put the washer on, locking washer, and the nut on top, push the bolts through obviously, and we're going to do that all the way down 100 times. So hang in, grab some coffee, no, I'm going to fast forward through this stuff, uh, actually I'm going to probably just show you a few of them. and. Um, when we're done, I'll, then I'll, I'll uh, show you how we're going to make a little, we'll have to make a little stand for this and get the wires prepped that are going to go from here to the batteries. All right, so we went ahead and put in <laughs> all the bolts, washers, locking washers, and nuts on, okay? I attached one wire already but I'm actually going to move it down one I'll explain why in a minute so this is the initial setup for the bus bar underneath I put tape here electric tape to kind of hold the the, the uh, bolts there so when I flip it upside down that they don't all fall or not when I take the nut off to put the wire on they don't just fall through so we went ahead and stripped a bunch of um, 110 wire and I forget the gauge what I got what I got going on here. I want to say it was 12. Yeah, it's 12 gauge wire. Um, so we got 50 white or positive, and 50 black or negative. First row will be the first seven here. The first one is actually for the positive wire to go through so this one needs to be moved down but I'm gonna wire it so four three the first three on that seven are gonna to go to the left and the second four are gonna to go to the right and that'll just make it easier as you're connecting the wires you don't have to do a bunch more bending and twisting loosening up connections and things of that nature and that'll be the same all the way down for your positives and your negatives and then I'm gonna set these on a wooden blocks on the front and back to give a little space off of the batteries themselves and yes all these wires for your negative and positive I I did make them all the same length okay so it's my furthest away one set the length for for all of them even though some of them only probably need to be about this long and it's been I've been wondering about it for a while and I still haven't really found any answers to it but my thought for because you keep talking people keep talking about voltage loss is I think that the ones with shorter wires, it would charge those ones faster at a faster rate because this whole bar is going to be charged, right? So if this one only had to travel 3 inches and this one has to go 13 inches, this one's going to get charged faster and will also dissipate energy 
faster than the other ones. So it's the amount of time that it would take for the voltage to go from here to the battery. So you want to keep that uh, the same. That's what my belief is. If that's right and you know, tell me. If it's wrong and you know, tell me. But if you don't know, don't tell me. But uh, So that's that's my best educated guess that I have. And it might not be educated enough. Um, but I ain't going to lie to you. And I, I don't want to lead, lead you astray. So look it up for yourself. Maybe you can find the answer and let us all know. So let's talk about for a moment on the... Um, hook here okay so this hook I want to go clockwise so when I tighten the nut that the hook actually goes tightens back in and doesn't spread out this last one I did I just did it incorrectly so I gotta change it um, and the reason I'm so technical that part is absent and absolute and facing the right way um, with this you can move it all around and, and twist and turn which I'm gonna do a little bit but whatever I can minimize the better so I, I put the flat of this connection piece on to go on the terminal like like so. So that the grooved part is up. Okay? And that way everything stays uniformed. It makes a good connection that way. And the reason I'm being so particular on the length of this is how well it fits inside of here. And putting a little bit of that plastic sleeve inside the collar so when I tighten it down it helps clamp it down to the wire as well that's why I am doing it that way so I'm gonna use a little bit of a baker's trick we're gonna take multi-purpose synthetic grease I'm gonna put it in this bag I'm gonna cut the corner and that way I can um, be able to control the amount instead of it coming out the large hole there I'm going to have it come out just a small corner and, and go around these electrical connections and try not to, and not want them to actually touch with the electrical grease either. So we're going to do this down, down these 50 or 49 and then we'll do it down the other 49. Alright, so I got it set in the bag here. So I got it set in the bag here. It's a small amount to start out because I really don't know how much I'm going to use or whatever. Probably be a lot more than that. but Alright. Just twist it kind of to keep it at one spot. And we're just going to cut a very small corner off of this. Very small amount. You can see. Okay. Just that little bit of amount that comes out, okay? Okay, now we're going to get inside each one of these connector pieces too that go to the battery. So we're going to squirt just a small amount into those and get that all prepped. And then this one will be pretty well set to uh, at least get it charged from the generator. The connection from the um, solar charge controller to the generator will be a different story. All right, so this is what we have, a Christmas tree looking little bugger. So I put dielectrical grease on all the connections here and dielectrical grease on the inside of all the connection pieces for the 
batteries, right? So this piece here will connect to our batteries, positive and negative. All right, so here's our finished product. The batteries, 49 batteries are wired together. And this is the bus bar system that we've been working on. So down here is one empty space for where the ground wire is going to connect. And on the other side is where the positive wire is going to connect. Now, so far, I have charged this for a few days. And with the varying batteries and uh, discharged at different rates, they were all needing different amounts of electricity. So... We put the negative on and we take the positive here and I get a good connection here. The bus bar system itself it jumps around a little bit. Okay. If you put it on the actual uh, bolts, you get an average of about twelve and a half. Okay, about 12.45. Stays pretty, pretty consistent right there, about 12.45 so far. I could charge it a little bit more, um, but we're in need of power for a lot of stuff. So we are going to hook up the system to the charge controller, get things set up for the solar solar arrays and then also leave it so it's available to charge um through a generator with the charger there so this is in a, in a nutshell is what we have going on you see the connections i know it looks somewhat chaotic but it, there is a method to the madness as we went on the negative side, we went four wires to this side, coming all the way up to the middle. And then we did these three wires from one, two, and three here. And your top one starts your furthest way out, and then they works the way in. And the opposite set on the positive is actually four wires that go this way, one, two, and three. And then one, two, three, four. And then you have your three, one, two, and three connected so. And that goes the same all the way down to the end and that will allow us to uh, get better better battery life longevity and connectivity um, so there you go that is our um, bus bar system that we have created for the batteries to be charged now when it comes to the uh, solar charger the uh, you want to use the thickest cables you can from the solar charge contro controller to the batteries and the shortest path you can as well. That being said, uh, that is a different video it's because I want to focus on the solar charge controller, um, what it does, what it can do, that kind of stuff. It is a I'll give you a sneak peek. Um, so synthesis solar charge controller, it's an MPPT. 50 amp, as I'm just reading the box to you. But uh, this solar charge controller has a lot of good um, uh, features on it, including Bluetooth. <clears throat> and I'm going to show this controller with the, the wire that we use, and also the conjunction box that I'm going to use for bringing the power out from the charge controller to a junction box with, again, homemade bus bars to drive the power out from those connected to a main wire that runs for the lights inside the campers lights outside and for the power for your pump our pump for the water and also a circulating pump it's really it and then a few things that we charge here for phones and stuff like that so that is the that that's what we're working on That in a nutshell is what we got going on with the mess everywhere. Um, we're still working on this at the same time and all this 
and you name it. So we're kind of in a cluttered mess at the moment. Um, but the po thing is that we're just going to get power, charge some stuff, get lights on some things, make our life just a little bit easier at the moment, um, back to where we were, uh, hopefully better than where we were. And then we're just going to keep tracking along, keep working on the other stuff, getting it going, or getting it done. Um, this will likely be the gauge wire that we're using. It's a four gauge um, strand. I can get you in there. So it's a four gauge strand wire. And this four gauge strand wire will do the job. I can actually, in the solar charge controller, I believe can take a, a little bit more than that. Um, but we're not going over 50 amps with this controller and with the solar that we have. So be plenty fine. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. So um, if you like this video, we got other ones coming up. I do plan on doing more of the homestead off-grid farm life that we have going on too on our channel. And um, that's going to, well, obviously we're going to have the build on this, which is the DIY part of it. Uh, this this thing going up. Um, I want to put that together at the end when we're done. Um, but I've been thinking about doing some daily day-to-day day -day stuff or some weekly things, what we got going on as a progressive updates through through our... Through our life that are you know, five to seven minutes maybe ten minutes depending what we have um, versus on like the the other channel you can see uh, some of our daily stuff but it's only one or two minutes long um, so if that's something that you'd like to see let us all know uh, let, let me know and a comment below and the, the more response I have would really help let us know if that's something we can focus on and, and bring to you as uh, something that you would enjoy doing or watching or having uh, the ability to watch right so all right this is uh we're off grid farming be blessed have fun and we'll see you in the next one